In this video, I will go over how to use the WLED app. You can access it either on your phone or through your web browser by typing in the IP address of your controller. The first screen that will open up is the color screen. This is where you choose the colors you want to use. You can either choose any of these presets down here below, or you can choose your own colors by clicking on this one using the color wheel or these colors to choose what color you want. Then you can choose your second color, doing the same thing, third color, same thing. The next screen is the effects screen. This is where you choose which effect you, are, you would like your lights to run. Up top here, you have two sliders. You have the effect speed, which is how fast it runs, and then the effect intensity, which is often the number of LEDs running that effect at a time. Down here is where you select all the different effects you want to do. There are well over 100 of them. One thing to note is that not all of them let you use your own custom colors. A lot of them have their own presets, so you'll need to go through and find out which ones let you do that. Some of them that do are solid, anything with try in it, so try chase, try solid pattern, and, and so on. One thing you can also do is click this peak button up at the top, and it will show you what your lights are currently doing at that time. So you can kind of get an idea of what your lights are doing without actually going outside to see them. The next screen is the segment screen. Chances are you won't use this, but this is where you would go if you want to split your lights into different groups on your house. This will allow you to have one segment running one animation, and then a second segment running another, or a third, or fourth. You can have as many segments as you want. It will already have a segment zero, and that will, and that will just include all the lights. If you wish to add another segment, you just click Add Segment, choose your Start LED. So let's say we will start it on LED 50, and then stop that segment on LED 75. So you have to now have a new group of 25 LEDs. And then you can make another one, go from LED 75 up to LED 100, and you have another segment of 25 LEDs. You can then assign different animations or different colors to each one of those individual segments. The next screen is the favorite screen. This is where you create any presets you want to keep so you can refer back to them easily. The easiest way to do that is to set your lights how you want. So choose the animation, choose the colors, set the brightness, and then you go to create preset, enter whatever name you want in there, and then make sure that use current state is selected, and then include the brightness, save segment bounds, and then click save preset. And then you've got a new preset here. There will already be quite a few different presets in there for various holidays that we've put in, along with one for lights off. Something else you can do on the screen is create playlists. Here you can set it up so it will transition between different presets for certain amounts of time. So let's say, so we create a new playlist, let's just name it test. We'll start out with a Christmas preset. We'll have that run for 10 seconds and then have a transition period of 0.7 seconds between the next preset. Then you just click this little plus button, then you can add another. So we'll run the Halloween preset for 10 seconds, do another one, patriotic one, and so on. And then you just save the playlist, and then there you go. Then you've got another playlist right here that you can use. If you want to use timers to automatically turn on and off your lights, you will need to have presets created from the favorite screen. We created several presets for you to use if you want, one of which is preset 99, which turns off the lights. To set up the timers, go to config, then down to time and macros. You shouldn't need to worry about any of these settings up at the top, except this bottom one, which is time controlled presets. Each one of these lines is a timer that then tells a specific preset to turn on. For example, let's say you want to turn on preset one. To do that, we type in one into the preset box, then choose what time you want that preset to turn on using a 24 hour time format. If we want the lights to turn on at 8.30 p.m., we enter 20 into the hour box and then 30 into the minute box. We then choose which days of the week we want this timer to run. To turn off the lights, we use the preset 99. So if we want to turn off preset 1 at 11 p.m. that we just set up in this first timer, we do the following. Type in 99 into the preset section, then enter 23 into the hours and 0 into the minutes. As this is set up now, it will turn on preset 1 at 8.30 p.m. every day of the week and then turn them off at 11 p.m. using preset 99. You can also set timers up to turn on different presets at different times or on different days. Let's say you want to use preset 1 on Monday through Thursday, but you want to use preset 2 on Friday through Sunday. We already set up preset 1, so let's just change the days on that so it's just Monday through Thursday. And now we will create a second timer for preset 2. So we'll enter 2 into the preset. And then we will also have these lights turn on at 8.30 p.m. And then we check the boxes so that it is only Friday through Sunday that these are turned on. And then at the bottom, we still have preset 99, which turns the lights off every day of the week at 11 p.m. 
these timers with the hour set to sunrise and sunset will trigger that preset at that time. So if you want to turn preset one on right as the sun sets, you just enter one into there and then choose the days you want it to turn on. The last thing we're going to go over are these buttons up top. The first one is the power button. This will just turn it on and off. The timer is for, for if you want to turn your lights on for a certain amount of time and just let them turn off automatically. It's set for 60 minutes by default, but you can go into the config settings and change that if you'd like. The sync button will always be on by, on by default. This is useful if you have multiple controllers that you want to sync together. It will sync any controller on your network to each other. So if you make a change on one controller, it will make the exact same changes on all your other controllers. You might be using this if you have multiple controllers. So like if you have one controller for your main roof of lights and then for your second roof, you have a second box with a second controller in there. This is what will sync them together. This peak button we covered already, it will show you just a preview of what will be happening. The info button just tells you information about the version of WLED that it's running, the signal strength and so on. Don't need to worry about that. And the config is where you change all the different settings. And then you've got the brightness up here that you can just adjust as you need.